Hello, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, all the people of the world, all the people of the universe and the creatures of the universe, or my Algebra 2 students. I hope you guys are having a great day. We are wrapping up Chapter 7 today with a discussion about how to solve exponential equations and logarithmic equations. You know, this is always where we're headed is to solve the equations. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So pulling a couple of things here from your book. Um, what are what's an exponential equation? You probably already know this. It's not going to come as a big shock to you. But an exponential equation is an equation that has a variable expression, you know, something with an X in it. Uh, where the var variable expression occurs as exponents. Now, based on that, there is a core concept in, in your textbook, and there's really two core concepts in the book. I'm going to talk about both of them right now, and then I'm going to show you several examples about how we're going to actually use them to solve equations. The, the core concepts are really things that I think when you when we talk about them, you kind of go, well, yeah, that's that's kind of obvious, isn't it? And it is kind of obvious, but it's still an important concept for us to establish that this thing is true so that we can then use it to help us solve problems. OK, so we'll read the, uh, the statement here. If B is a positive real number other than one, then B to the power of X equals B to the power of Y. If and only if the other this other thing is true, and that is that x is equal to y. And when you stop to think about this uh, equation right here, it makes complete sense, right? If you have a base being raised to a power, and then you have that same base being raised to a power, obviously the two powers have to be the same in order for them to be equal. 7 to the power of 2 would be equal to 7 to the power of 2, right? It only makes sense. So, you know, they give us an example of that, but this is going to come into play. We're going to use this, this concept here in a minute. Now, the other one is about logarithms. So what is a logarithmic equation? Well, a logarithmic, a logarithmic equation um, is an equation that involves logarithms of variable expressions. Again, logarithms of variables or independent variables or unknowns or X's. And there is a core concept based on this as well. So this one says, if B, X, and Y are positive real numbers and B is at one, B being the base, then log base B of X has to equal log base B of Y if and only if X and Y are equal. So if I have log base B of something, and it's equal to log base B of something else, the something and the something else, the X and the Y, the uh, unknown values there, the variable values, the variable expressions, they have to be equal. X has to be the same as Y. And they give us an example here. Hey, if log base two of X equals log base two of seven, well, then X has to be seven. X and seven have to be equal. So log base two of X is equal to log base two of seven if X and uh, X and seven are the same, are equal, have an equal value, okay? So using those two concepts, we're gonna solve uh, some different problems. First, we're gonna start with some exponential equations, then we'll, we'll do some log equations. Okay, so exponential equations, we already talked about those, those are equations that have uh, one or more expressions with a variable as the exponent. There's a couple of ways we're going to go about doing this. Okay, here's the two, the two kind of approaches we're going to use. If we can, we're going to try to take the equations that we're given, whatever we're given, and we're going to try to rewrite them. Um, if we need to need to redo any rewriting, we're going to try to rewrite them so that the bases are the same because we've already established Hey, if the bases are the same and it's an equation, in other words, the two sides are equal, then the exponents, which are the variables, they'd have to be the same. They'd have to be equal, right? 
if that doesn't work, our second option is if we have um, you know, an equation like this where A is equal to B and we can't make the basis match like we did up here, then what we will do is we will take the logarithm of both sides and try to solve it that way. Okay, and again, there's some caveats here. A and B both have to be positive numbers in this situation. And as we talked about earlier, the base can't be zero and it can't be one. All right, so let's look at some examples. These are not examples that are in your book. Um, the ones in your book are a little bit different. They're similar, um, but this will just give you some extra additional examples on top of what's in your textbook. So take a look at this first one. I've got nine to the power of uh, eight minus X is equal to 27 to the power of X minus three. So first things first, I look at the bases and I see the bases are not the same. Um, I do have my variables in the exponent area, but the bases don't match. So remember option number one is, hey, can I rewrite the base in such a way that I can make the bases match. So first I think about, okay, one base is nine, bigger base is 27. Can I rewrite 27 where the base is nine? Well, like nine squared, that'd be 81. That's already too big. That doesn't seem, that doesn't seem to work. But if I'm thinking, I recognize, hey, both of those are powers of three, right? Nine to some power, or I mean, uh, three to some power would equal nine and three to some power would equal 27. So I'm gonna rewrite them like that with nine as rewritten as three squared and 27 rewritten as three cubed. Now, what do I wanna do that? Because I'm trying to make the bases match. Now I can use the power of a power property where I say, oh, a power being raised to a power you know, multiply those and a power being raised to a power. Uh, I need to multiply those. Now, since this is a binomial up here in the exponent area, when I multiply, remember I've got to distribute. So it's going to be two times eight and two times the negative X. Here, when I multiply three times X minus three, again, the distributed property comes into play, three times X, three times negative three, of course it would be negative nine. But I'm going to do that. So, I get three to the power of 16 minus two X. I get three to the power of three X minus nine. Now I have met that first requirement that, hey, when the bases are the same, then the exponents have to equal one another. So 16 minus two X has to equal three X minus nine. That's great news because that's a basic algebra one equation at this point. We all know how to so solve this, gather the X's on the one side, Put the constants on the other, solve for x. So, you know, want to move these over, you can add 2x to both sides if you want to, or you could subtract 3x from both sides, you know, however you want to go about doing that. Um, if you do that, that's 5x. Then if I add 9 to both sides, 16 plus 9 is 25. So, 5x equals 25, therefore, x has to be 5. So basic, basic algebra one, okay? Now, one of the things I do want to do, you'll notice the instruction said to solve and check, because if you make a mistake with one of these things, you probably aren't going to realize it in the process of working the problem. You know, these are not, you know, simple math things where, you know, you would say, oh, wait, 16 minus 2x is not equal to 3x minus 9. I, you know, if you forgot to distribute, if you wrote, uh, you know, 18, I'm sorry, 16 minus X, and then you wrote 3X minus three, and if you forgot to distribute those, you wouldn't recognize that as, oh, wait, that's that's not right. I mean, you know, just based on looking at those things, you would have to realize you'd forgotten to distribute. So if you forget things like that and you don't check them, that's typically our downfall. So it's easy enough to check this. We're gonna take the original problem we're gonna take five and we're gonna go substitute it in up here. Now, you know, in this, co in this case, we got an exact answer because we had five X equals 25, so X was five. Even if we, have, we get an answer that we have to round, which we'll have to do in a little bit, 
if we have to round, then when we substitute back in to check, you know, our answer may not be exactly spot on, but it should be really, really close. And it should be accurate to the number of decimal places that we rounded our original answer to. So you can always check these, even if you've had to round or use a calculator and you get a long decimal answer that you round to three decimal places, you still can check these. So in this case, pretty easy. I'm gonna substitute the five in here. I'm gonna substitute the five in there. And gonna see if it works. Nine cubed, 729, five minus three is two, 27 squared is also 729. Guess what that checks? The solution is X equals five. So there we go. All right, let's look at a second one here. Um, again, we're asked to solve and check. Four to the power of X minus one equals five. Now you'll notice this doesn't have an exponent. We do know what the exponent is. It's one in this case when it's not written. But again, bases don't match. So the question becomes, hey, can I make the bases match? Well, in this case, no. You know, I know four, I guess said, hey, I could do two squared, but five is a prime number. And you know, there's not an, something, there's no two squared that would give two to some power that would give me five, two squared is four, two cubed is eight. There's not a way to make those two bases match. There's not a way to rewrite them to where they can have the same uh, base value. So I go to option number two, which um, was to take the logarithm of both sides. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna take the logarithm of both sides. So I'm gonna take the log of four to the power of X minus one. I'm gonna take the log of five. Now, remember these uh, properties that we learned in the last lesson, uh, the power property of logarithms tells me that I can take this, this power, this exponent, remember, and move it to the front of the equation. So that's a big deal in this case, because now, I have the variable that I'm trying to solve for X down in the main you know, body of this equation here. So now I can start isolating this like I would anytime I have an X in an equation. I'm trying to isolate the X so that eventually my equation says X equals and then some number, some value. So keep in mind, this is a, this is a grouped item, this x minus one, well, we have it in parentheses. So right now x minus one is being multiplied by the log of four. How do I undo multiplying by the log of four? I divide by the log of four. So we divide both sides by the log of four. So now I got log of five divided by the log of four. And now I've got x minus one over here. Of course, I wanted to just get the x by itself. How do I undo subtracting one? I add one to both sides negative one plus one goes away on this side and I get the one plus over here. Now at this point, I'm gonna have to do this calculation on a calculator. And I'll just point out to you, I'll remind you, you know, I just took the log of both sides. So I was using a common log, I was using base 10. Um, so I can easily plug this into my calculator. The log of five divided by the log of four, add the one to it and I get approximately two and 161 thousandths. So you'll notice I rounded to three decimal places here. Now, when I wanna go check, you know, I mentioned a minute ago that even if we have to round our answer and we get a long decimal answer, we can still check. And it's easy enough to do because you you got a calculator. You're gonna take this and you're gonna go up here and you're gonna substitute 2.1612 and 161 thousandths in right there for X. Now, when I do this calculation on the calculator, I do not expect to get exactly five, but I think it should be five to, you know, three decimal places. It should be accurate to what I rounded to. So when I go and I plug this into a calculator, I do get, you'll notice 5.0002, Sometimes uh, you know, there may be a rounding issue that might cause that to be um, you know, off by uh, uh, one unit, one direction or the other, if, uh, depending on how this got rounded. But it should be accurate you know, 
to about how many places that I rounded to. And I see that it is. Now past that, it's not exactly five, but this is not the exact answer. This is an approximate answer. So it is approximately five. So it, it checks. I feel confident in that. Okay. Um, and that's what we just talked about. It should be reasonably close when we round it. All right. Another example, seven to the power of negative X equals 21. Well, again, I'm gonna ask, hey, can I make the bases match? And this one, you might initially think, oh, seven times three is 21. But remember, we need a base of seven, not seven times three. We need seven to a power of something. That doesn't work. So even though this one initially, you might, you might think, oh, I could change the base and make the bases match. Turns out you really can't. So because, you know, hey, seven to just the power of two is already 49. So there's really no way to make that one work. Um, what we can do, though, then is take the logarithm of both sides. So I'm going to take the log of both sides. Again, I'm using common logs here, log base 10, because that just makes my life easier. And why would I want to make it more complicated? Using that uh, power property again, we're going to move the exponent, negative x, down in front of the logarithm into the main body of the equation. Ooh, I got some fancy PowerPoint uh, rotations going on there. Ooh, nifty. Uh, negative x times the log of 7 is equal to the log of 21. Remember, we're trying to solve for x. We're trying to get x by itself. Right now, x is being multiplied by the log of 7. So we use our basic uh, algebra skills, divide both sides by the log of 7, and then uh, divide both sides or multiply both sides by negative one and multiply both sides by negative one. That's going to give me a negative log of 21 divided by the log of seven. And again, I'm going to get a decimal approximation. And then I'm going to take that decimal approximation. I'm going to substitute it up here uh, into X and hopefully I will get close to 21. And when I check it on the calculator, you will see that we do get close to 21. Now notice that it doesn't, it's not exactly, and again, a little bit of that rounding error comes in, but close enough that I feel good about uh, my answer. All right. Okay, let's try this one. And y'all go ahead and if you want to, you can pause the video and see if you can do this one yourself and uh, then unpause it and I'll work through it real quick. Pause. Okay, we unpaused. Um, again, I can't make the bases match, so I'm going to take the logarithm of both sides. I'm going to take the 3 to the power, or I'm sorry, the 3x, the exponent power up here. I'm going to move it down to the front using the power property. And divide both sides by the log of 2. And multiply both sides by one third, or divide both sides by three, and I'm going to get that answer. And again, I'm going to check this. I'm going to take one point three zero two one and three hundred and two thousandths. I'm going to substitute it in a, up here for x. Keep in mind, I'm going to multiply that by three, so it's going to throw off my my exact answer just a little bit but I hope to get close to 15 and you see I get 14.9907, which close enough, uh, reasonable uh, considering that I rounded. So I feel good about that. All right, let's do a word problem here. The practical application is always important. There's also a good word problem in your textbook and application problem in the examples. Um, I'm not looking at it. I think it's example three. So make sure you look at that one in your book as well. But let's take a look at this one for a minute. Suppose a bacteria culture doubles in size every hour. So, you know, we've talked about doubling before. So that's, we're, we're used to that. How many hours will it take for the number of bacteria to exceed 1 million? And of course the word exceed there is important. That's in essence greater than 1 million. So we know what, uh, what's happening when we're talking about a something doubling in size over certain periods of time. We know that makes the base two. We worked these kinds of problems before this, certainly in the first time. So we know that two to the power of zero, that is the zero hour. At hour zero, two to the power of zero 
um, there is one bacteria, okay? Because you take a culture, you have a bacteria. So we start at our zero. In other words, at the start, we have, of course, two to the power of zero is one. So we have one bacteria. At hour one, which is gonna be two to the power of one, it has doubled. So now we have two bacteria, all right? And you know that process then continues on. So what we're asked then, you know, what hour is it we're gonna take to get over a million? So two to some unknown number of hours, you know, is gonna get us to that million point. So you will see here that we went ahead and took 1 million and we wrote it as a power of 10. Um, and you may say, well, why do we wanna do that? Why couldn't I just use a million? And you could, but it really will make life easier. Plus, you know, anytime you start writing out a number with a bunch of zeros at the end, you run the risk of forgetting a zero, adding an extra zero, punching one more or one less zero into the calculator. There's all kinds of things that can go wrong with that. Um, if I can avoid it, well, let's avoid it. So I'm gonna take the 1 million, of course, that's a one with six zeros, that's 10 to the sixth power in the scientific annotation. It's not scientific notation, because it would be a number times 10 to a power, but it is scientific annotation there. So I rewrite that again, just like I would with an equation, you know, if this was an equal sign, I would say, hey, can I make the bases match? Well, I got two to a power. Can I rewrite 10 as two to a power? Two squared is four, two cubed is eight, but two to the fourth power is 16. That doesn't work, so no. So what do we do? We take the logarithm of both sides. Now, we take the log of both sides, taking, you know, of course, a common log, which is typically what we wanna do here because common logs are easy to use, but notice that then this is log base 10 of 10 to the power of six. Now you remember our properties, you know that log base 10 of 10 to the power of six is simply six. Now you, that, you know, you might not recognize that as easily if you had 1 million here, if you had the log of 1 million you could calculate it, but this, we don't even need to pick up a calculator and punch in buttons. And again, you start punching in a bunch of zeros, you run the risk of not enough or too many. So log base 10 of 10 to the power of six is just six. Um, over here, of course, we got the log of two to the power of n. So we're gonna go ahead and take that, that n that was up here, use the power property, move it over here on the right, course, we're just going to say this log base 10 to 10 to the power of 6, which is 6. Now, remember, I'm trying to solve for my unknown number of uh, doublings. How many times is it going to have to double? So I'm just trying to get that n by itself. Right now, n is being multiplied by the log of 2. So I'm going to divide by the log of 2. And guess what? I've got my answer. Okay, I can find the log of 2. And I am going to evaluate all this with a calculator and I get 19.94. So I'm going to need an n value greater than 19.94. Now remember, our doubling was happening every hour. So at the end of hour 19, it's not going to have hit a million yet. But by hour 20, we're going to have over a million because at 19.94 hours, we're going to hit that million mark. So anything over that is going to get us past 1 million bacteria. So there we go. Okay, that's my answer. My answer is going to be 20, not 19. It's going to be 20. All right. And I can check that by doing, hey, how much is 2 to the power of 20? And, you know, double check, make sure that that does work out. And it does. It's over a million million forty eight thousand five hundred seventy six to be exact all right now let's take a talk about the the second core concept here solving the logarithmic equations so remember the rule log base b of x is equal to log base b of y if and only if 
x is equal to y. So if they tell us that this is true, then what also has to be true is that x has to be equal to y. Okay, so we're going to use properties of logarithms to help us solve these kinds of equations. So I've got this one, and this one looks like it might be really tough initially. Um, log base 6, uh, power of 2x minus 1 is equal to negative 1. Well, you know, you're thinking, hey, I'm going to go back a screen for just a second. You're thinking, hey, Mr. Owens, this doesn't have a log on both sides. It has a log on one side, but it doesn't have a log on the other side. So what am I going to do with this? Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to use one of our properties that um, we have learned before. Remember the property where you have b to the log base b of x, all that just equals x? Well, what if we make this the exponent and we make this the exponent? So what we're doing is we're saying, hey, we're going to make, you know, remember logarithms are equal to exponents. So since we can't get the log, we don't already are given the log of both sides like we have here on the screen, I'm going to make this logarithm an exponent. And therefore, this side would also need to be an exponent. What do I want to make it an exponent of? What number would I want to be the base down here for this? Well, I would want the base to match the base of the logarithm. I would want the base here to be 6. So what I'm going to redo, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this where I have the log base 6 of 2x minus 1, make it an exponent from a base of 6. So 6 to the power of log base 6 of 2x minus 1. Of course, what I do on one side, I'm doing on the other because I'm saying, okay, this is an exponent. So it equals that exponent equals negative 1 here. So now, look, the bases match which means, okay, these two things are equal. So I know I haven't violated any rules by doing this because I'm following our basic premise of, hey, if the bases match, then the exponents have to be equal. Well, we already know the exponents are equal because they were up here equal as equations. Why does this help me? What is six to the power of log base six of two X minus one? This is B to the power of log base B of X. So we know it's just equal to this, this expression right here, 2x minus 1. Well, on the other side, of course, I've got 6 to the power of negative 1. Well, that's a number, right? Negative exponents mean we use the reciprocal of the base. The reciprocal of 6 is 1 sixth. Hey, now I've got an algebra 1 equation. I know some of you hate uh, the fraction part of this, but it's still just an algebra 1 equation. Add the 1 to both sides. You get one and one six or seven six if you want to write it as an improper fraction. And then you've got to divide by two. Divide by two or multiply by a half. Seven six times one half is seven twelfths. So just a little basic fraction work and we have our answer. Okay. And you could go back here and grab your calculator and say, Hey, log base 6 of 2 times uh, 7 twelfths minus 1, and see if it doesn't give you something close to negative 1, and it will. All right, let's look at another one here. So log base 4 of 100 minus log base 4 of x plus 1 is equal to 1. So here, I want to use my log properties. Remember, we have a log property when we're subtracting two logarithms that have a common base that we can combine them by making them a division uh, of the 100 and of the x plus 1. So I'm going to rewrite this as log base 4 of 100 over x plus 1 equal to the 1. Now I'm going to do the same thing I did a minute ago. Since these two sides are now equal, I'm going, since I can't you know, they're not logarithms on both sides. I'm going to make both of these exponents. And what is my base value going to be? Well, it's determined by the base of the logarithm. Since the base of that logarithm is 4, the base that I'm going to use on both sides is going to be a 4. So 4 to the power of log base 4 of 100 over x plus 1. At this point, we all know how much that is. That is 100 over x plus 1. 
On the other side, remember we had to use a base of four. We use this as our exponent one. Well, can't be any easier than that. Four to the power of one is four. So now I just need to solve this. So several ways you can do this. Um, you know, I know sometimes uh, I was just talking to a teacher last uh, this past week in the hallway and they said, oh, kids wanted to cross multiply. Well, in this problem, cross products would be a legitimate way to work this. You could write this as four over one and do 100 times one is equal to four times x plus one. You can do it like that. You can multiply both sides by x plus one um, and then uh, divide by the 100, however you'd like to do it. I'm pretty flexible, it's all algebra one, and we end up with x is 24, okay? All right, a couple more examples and we're gonna be done here. So this one, log base five of x to the power of four is equal to eight. Again, I don't have a logarithm on both sides. I'm gonna take the uh, power property Move that four to the front. And now at this point, I want to start isolating the logarithm that has the X in it. So I need to get rid of this multiplier in front. So I'm going to divide both sides by four. And that's easy enough because eight divided by four is two. Now, you know what? We can just use the definition of a logarithm to rewrite this as an exponential equation. Remember, log base 5 of x equals 2. Why? Because logarithms equal the exponent, right? Logarithms are exponents. So this is 5 to the power of 2 is equal to x. So just rewrite that using the definition of a logarithm. Hey, I know 5 squared is 25, and I've got my answer. All right, last example I'm going to give you here. Log base 12 of x plus log base 12 of x plus one equals one. Now again, since I'm adding two logarithms that have a common base, I'm gonna use my logarithm properties. Remember the property, product property of logarithms tells us when we have logarithms, same base that we're adding, we can multiply the expressions here and here. So I'm gonna do exactly that. I'm gonna multiply x times x plus one, okay? Now, again, since I have a logarithm on one side, but not on the other, I'm gonna use these as exponents. I'm gonna use that 12 as the base. So 12 to the power of log base 12 of X times X plus one is equal to 12 to the power of one. And all of this, of course, 12 to the power of log base 12 of X times X plus one is just X times X plus one. Over here, of course, 12 to the power of one is simply 12. Now, at this point, we do have a quadratic happening. I'm gonna to have to distribute that X. So X times X is X squared. X times one is one X. I'm gonna go ahead and subtract the 12, make it into a quadratic trinomial. So y'all thought we were done with quadratics, but I've told you before, we'll never be done with quadratics. They're never gonna go away which is why we spent so much time in the first semester learning them. So what do I wanna do here? I wanna solve a quadratic equation. Now we've learned multiple ways to do it. Some of you will go instantly and say, oh, I'm gonna use the quadratic formula. My A is one, my B is one, my C is negative 12. And if that's what you wanna do, more power to you, I'm gonna factor it because, hey, this is a, a quadratic trinomial with a lead term of one. I just need factors of negative 12 that add up to positive one. That's pretty easy. That's four and negative three. Four times negative three is negative 12 and four minus three is one. That works. So I've got two answers here, right? I've got X is equal to three or X is equal to negative four. So I've got two answers. So I need to check both of these answers. You'll remember, hey, anytime we're solving quadratics, we're always gonna check our answers. So I'm gonna take that original problem. Remember it was log base 12 of X plus log base 12 of X plus one equals one. And I'm gonna substitute three in for X and solve it. And then I'm gonna do the same thing again, but I'm gonna substitute negative four in for X and I'm gonna solve that, make sure that they both 
are actual solutions. There's no extraneous solution. And you see that when I plug in the three here on this side, I get log base 12 of three plus the log base 12 of four. And again, using that uh, property that says, hey, when the bases are the same and you're adding, you can multiply these. That three times four is 12. That becomes log base 12 of 12, which I know is one. Hey, and one equals one, we have a winner. But over here, we do not have a winner. We get the big red eh. log base 12 of a negative number. We can stop right there. That's undefined. We've talked about that many times. This has to be a uh, positive. It is not a positive number. Log base 12 of negative four is not defined. We can't go any further. We are done. Negative four is an extraneous solution. This problem only has one solution and it is X equals three. All right. Okay, folks, that is all I have for you today. I hope you have a great day, and we will talk to you soon. Goodbye.